Ontario's new housing minister outlined his plans today to review the Greenbelt lands. Paul Calandra suggested more land could be removed from the protected area. The CBC's Lorena Redekop has the story. Paul Calandra spoke to reporters today for the first time since becoming Minister of Housing with details on a review of the Greenbelt. It will be a full, open and accountable uh, process. It will look at the entirety of the Greenbelt. There may be lands that uh, need to be added to the Greenbelt. There may be some... Uh, 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 some lands that, that are removed. Calandra says the province's nonpartisan land and development facilitator will lead it, and the 14 sites removed from the Greenbelt will be included in the review. He wants that part of the work to be finished by the end of the year. We're building communities. I expect significant community benefits on these lands. I expect the natural heritage, any natural heritage features on these lands to be protected. However, it's unclear how natural heritage can be protected with housing set to be built there. The Auditor General found 83% of land removed from the Greenbelt was classified as prime agricultural land. While the review of those sites happens, development work will not have to be paused. Because what he is proposing to do with this Greenbelt review is create a speculator's bonanza throughout the entire Greenbelt. The Green Party leader worries that in the end, more land will be opened up for development. If, if the housing crisis is what's driving this, why aren't you focused on building the homes on land that's already approved for development? The Ford government is trying to move past this scandal that's been going on for almost a month. First, the Auditor General, then the Integrity Commissioner released explosive reports detailing how a few developers had direct access to the Housing Minister's Chief of Staff. The Chief of Staff resigned. Later, the Minister stepped down. And there have been questions about illegal lobbying. The Integrity Commissioner naming a mysterious Mr. X. Sources say it's this man, the former mayor of Clarington. Late this afternoon, the government put out a release saying the Attorney General will recommend changes to lobbyist legislation with a committee set to look into it. Among the recommendations will be stiffer penalties, including jail time. Lorenda Radicomp, CBC News, Toronto. Tim Gray in Toronto is the executive director of the advocacy group Environmental Defence. Gray says that with shovels still going into Greenbelt lands, review or not, it's clear to him that the government is not acting in the public interest. Well, clearly uh, the government and the development industry sees a crisis and decided to seize an opportunity in it. Um, essentially what's been announced here is that they will be plowing ahead with plans to destroy uh, these areas of the Greenbelt. Uh, looking to build houses on them, even though all of the information available to the government, to the public, shows that none of these lands are needed uh, to meet the province's housing goals. And in addition, of course, they're going to uh, start a process to look at hundreds and hundreds of development applications across the Greenbelt. So um, it's a very, very sad day. Um, the government is doubling down in its attack on the Green Belt and the attack on environmental protection uh, in Ontario. And so uh, why do you think that is after, you know, such a contentious, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of months, several weeks, right, where, where we, we know the story now. The minister resigned. Uh, there, were, there was lots of um, contentiousness around it. Why do you think this is, is happening? It's really hard to understand. I mean, clearly the government is no longer acting in the public interest. Um, it's, uh, you know, kind of laughing in the face of both the integrity commissioner and the auditor general and uh, in the face of facts and uh, plowing ahead with doing favors for rich land developers that will actually undermine our ability to build housing where we need it inside of cities and towns where it's uh, more affordable, where it is uh, more easily serviced, um, where people can afford it and where it keeps taxes lower. So th this is about uh, rewarding well-connected uh, developers um, uh, at the expense of the public. Minister Calandra says he expects to break ground uh, on the green belt in these areas by 2025. How realistic is that timing, do you think? Well, we'll see. I mean, there's uh, you know many barriers to actually going ahead with this destruction. The municipalities, of course, uh, are probably going to want to stay far away from approving these developments. Um, increasingly, they're going to be mired in, in legal conflict. There's an ongoing RCMP investigation. 
There's liabilities around uh, a violation of, uh, of restrictions that currently exist on this that could be brought to bear by future landowners that are exposed to risk. Um, the federal government has legal responsibilities to protect many of the values that are now threatened in these areas. So, um, you know, this is not over by any stretch, and the public is outraged um, and uh, will mobilize. So, um, mm -hmm. this government needs to listen to what the people of Ontario are saying, what the uh, facts say, and what its own uh, um, agencies that report on its activities are saying to them. Okay, so you sound like you're ready for a fight. You also seem to be suggesting, correct me if I'm wrong, that you actually don't think that a lot of these lands will in fact be developed, that there will not be shovels uh, in the ground despite what the minister is saying today about um, this going ahead on these 14 sites? Absolutely. Um, I think that uh, facts are on the side of protecting these lands. Uh, many of them were legislatively protected in addition to being in the green belt. They're very high value ecological lands. They're not needed for housing. This is purely a gift to well-connected developers and uh, the public sees that. All professional uh, and uh, government reviews have shown the same thing and um, people of Ontario are not gonna stand for it. So I do not see development going ahead on these lands.